Hey, welcome to another innovation production. As you can see, it's a mess here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff here in a small, compact space, and I'm trying to fit as much as possible in there. And as you can see, it's, it's not very workable. I've got two under desk attachments, one for my keyboard and, and trackball, one for my Razer keypad, which I use for video editing. Um, I've got a 49 key MIDI control here. I've got another 32 key MIDI control there. I've also got a Korg Nano Pad and Nano Control. I've got the Edifiers R12 ADBs, which I use as um, studio monitors for music making. I've got the Logitech Z533 computer speakers. I've got like a ViewSonic 32 inch monitor and an Asus 23 inch monitor. So a whole bunch of stuff here in in a small space and I'm trying to make it work better. Keep watching and I'll show you how I'm going to transform this desk into a functional workspace for not much money at all. Hey, so earlier I showed you my workstation setup from yesterday. So after a few hours of work, I've completely transformed it. See if you can tell the difference. Check out this tray. Now this tray actually runs the entire depth of my existing desk. I've fitted it to under the desk and now my keyboard is here, my trackball is here, my gaming keypad is here which I use for video editing and my Arturia Keylab Essential 49 which is sitting on my desktop is now here for easier access. The native instruments M32 was sitting on the side here so I had to turn around to the side and look at the screen sideways every time I had to use it but now it's sitting on my on my desk. Got the cold nano pad here. So this setup is way better than what I had earlier, where I had to turn to different places to reach different things, and I was really cramped around here. But now the workflow is really easy. The two keyboards, the cold nano pad, everything I need is here. So if you're interested in making one of these yourself, I'll give you some instructions. Keep watching. So now I'm going to tell you about the parts you require to make this build. Now, if you look at the links in the description below, I'll give you a listing of all the parts that I used and the parts that you will know will work with each other. So there's nothing worse than getting parts of a different size and they just don't fit together. An experience of trying to fit in the M6 bolt into one of the brackets, which hole was too small, I had to use a drill to actually drill through solid steel, which, which took a long time. So first of all, you need a tabletop. This will obviously be used for the tray that comes out. Now you've got a few different options here. In terms of material, the one I chose was a solid wood laminate top. So which means it's um, a combination of smaller pieces glued together, um, but made of solid wood. And it looks great and it's also really strong. Your other options may include plywood. Another option would be getting a tabletop from Ikea, which is quite cheap. In terms of the length of the tabletop, there's really no limit to how long you can have it, um, depending on how long your actual desk is. Obviously, you can't go beyond the size of your desk. And because of the, the runners that have to fit under your desk, it has to be a bit less than the width of your desk. Now, obviously, the longer it is, the stronger it has to be. Now, if you've seen those bookshelves from IKEA, you, you will notice that over time, if you have heavy books in the middle of the shelf, the middle will start to sag a bit because the material that they're using is particle board. Now, particle boards are pretty much just wood chips glued together to form a board and laminated on the outside. Now, I recommend using something stronger if you're gonna have quite a long table. Now, in terms of the depth of the table, that's limited only by the depth of your existing desk. Obviously, you don't wanna have a tray that's actually deeper than your desk. That will go beyond the desk or jutting out a bit. In terms of drawer sliders, they come in different lengths. Obviously, you want to match the length of the slider to the depth of your tabletop tray. Now, make sure you get one that has a weight rating. In other words, uh, they should tell you the capacity or the, the maximum weight that it can handle. And make sure you don't go above and beyond that weight when you're using it. Keep in mind, you have to add the weight of the actual tabletop tray plus any equipment that you're putting on top of it. And it'd be good to have a bit of a buffer as well. In terms of angle brackets, you want to get solid steel angle brackets. Now for the large angle bracket, which connects to the underside of your desk and to the 
outside of the drawer slider. You want to get one that has at least two holes for you to attach it to the underside of your desk because that's going to be handling all the weight. And also for the section that goes down, you want to have a few holes that will give you the option of how high or low you want to position the sliding tray. For the small angle brackets, you also want to get ones that will have two holes on either section, which will give you more options for positioning. In terms of fixings, you want to get eight screw inserts. Now a screw insert is one of these things with a hole in the middle and on the outside it's got a bit of a corkscrew design. You also want to get eight bolts that corresponds to the size of the screw insert and that bolt will fix the large angle bracket into the screw insert into the underside of your desk. And you also want to get eight smaller bolts and nuts and these ones will attach the large angle brackets to the outside of the drawer slider and also on the inside of the drawer slider to attach to your tabletop tray. And lastly, you need eight screws to attach the smaller angle bracket to the bottom of your tabletop tray. Okay, so the first thing I did was to attach the four small angle brackets. So this is the left slider. On the inside of the slider, I attach one bracket on one end and the other bracket way down the other end of the slider and this is on the inside track. I have the right angle facing this way to the tray as opposed to the other way because of the height that I wanted for this tray. But you can just flip the other way if you wanted to. So you attach this right angle bracket using the, the M4 bolt and nut. Now in order to put the bolt in the one end, you have to move the slider rail along so you can actually find a hole somewhere in the middle so you can put it in. Because there's two layers, the outer rail and the inner rail, and you have to align them in order to find uh, a hole in the outer one that you can put the bolt in to get to the other side. At some point you may actually need to bend out um, one of the sections on the outer rail to enable you to have access to putting the screw in. So next I attach the the bigger bracket to the outer side of the rail. Uh, same thing, just threading the, the bolt through the other side and then putting a nut on the outside here. So the first step is basically to attach the two large angle brackets to the rail and the two small angle brackets on the inside of the rail and you do this for both rails. So for the next step I put my tray upside down onto the floor and using a power screwdriver I drive these screws to the underside of the, the tray and you do that for both sides. The final step is to use a drill to drill two holes for each large bracket into the underside of your desk and in these holes you would put in the screw insert put a bracket on top of it and then use your bolt to attach the large bracket to the underside of your of your desk so yeah thanks for watching this video there are links in the description below for items that you can get to make this if you do make your own build let me know in the comments below don't forget to subscribe for more videos thanks for watching